Hello students. Today we will explain the second type of stored grain paste, pulse beetle. The pulse beetle also belongs to phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, order Coleoptera, family Bruchidae, genus Callosobruchus or Bruchus, and the species Chinensis. The common name of the pulse beetle is Gram Dora or Mung Dora. Regarding distribution, this type of stored grain paste that is pulse beetle is distributed all over India and many other countries though not worldwide. This is a very important paste of various pulse crops in India both in fields and in a stores. The host plants, the main host plants are gram, peas, cow peas, lentil, arhar, that is sea cajun. Alternative host plants are chickpea, maize, soya bean and other pulses. Then regarding identification marks, the adults of pulse beetle are small roundish chocolate brown in color and belongs to the category of the beetles since the name of order is Coleoptera. So these are the beetles which are very small roundish chocolate brown in color measures up to 4 mm in a length. There are dark markings on the elytra that is first pair of wings and a white raised spots on the middle of the body. When observed from above, the beetle appears to be a heart shape in appearance and with a two ivory spots. There are two ivory colored spots on the middle of the dorsal side of its body. This beetle has a conspicuously swollen abdomen. The grub or larva is white, cylindrical, fleshy and wrinkled, found always inside the grain and has a brown colored head. Then we will explain its life cycle. The mature female of the Callosobruchus chinensis lays up to 90 number of eggs singly on the seeds or seed pods in the field. The incubation period is 4 to 6 days. So during this period, the fertilized egg undergoes embryonic development, passes through cleavage, blastulation, gastrulation and get transformed into a larva called as grub. The young larvae after its emergence or when the larva comes out of the egg burrows into the grain and feed inside for 2 to 3 weeks and undergoes 4 to 5 molds. So the larva on hatching prepare a hole a small hole onto the surface of the grain and penetrates inside and feeding onto the uh, floor material for about 2 to 3 weeks. So entire lifespan of the uh, grub or larva is inside of the food grains or pulse grains and during this period of 2 to 3 weeks it undergoes 4 to 5 moltings and involving 6 uh, number of instars during the larval development. The full grown larva is about 1 cm in length, white in color and uh, represents C shape or curved appearance. Then full grown larva, mature larva undergoes the third phase of life cycle that is pupation which occurs also within the grain or a grain dust and about 7 days 
uh, are required to complete the pupation. So, the pu process of pupation that is dormant phase of life cycle during which grub is transformed into the adult insect form and these uh, changes or the transformations are also taking place inside of the grains or the pulse grains or in the grain dust and this takes about 7 days to complete the pupation. After 7 days of the pupation, the adult emerges out, comes out from the grain by cutting a small uh, round hole. In India, about 6 to 7 generations of this pest take place in a year. So, there are 6 to 7 generations taking place in India and uh, thus uh, spoiling or damaging the large quantity of uh, pulse grains or the pulse crops uh, in the field as well as in the storehouses. Uh, so, this is the uh, uh, actual uh, process of its life cycle. Then figure shows the a round egg which uh, is a whitish in color and then next phase of life cycle that is a larva representing a small grub apodus without any appendage apodus larva with a large number of wrinkles representing the body segmentation and uh, having C set the larva then below third figure is a pupa that is a chrysalis representing the hardening or sclerotization or shortening of the body and so as to transform them into uh, vermiform larva into the head thorax and abdomen and the uh, on other side that is on the right side there are two uh, figures showing the adult beetle. Uh, the shape of the adult beetle from the dorsal surface in dorsal view we can see the shape of the body uh, of the uh, beetle is a hard shaped and uh, on uh, the above the lateral view the adult beetle shows a roundish body and uh, abdomen is uh, roundish or much uh, swollen uh, found in the uh, callosobruchus chinensis. So, this is the uh, figure showing the life cycle of the callosobruchus chinensis uh, representing different stages that is egg, larva, pupa and the adult in a dorsal view and a lateral view. Then regarding nature of damage, the pulse beetle attacks leguminous pods in the field from where they carried to the storage godowns. So, the, this pest can attack the leguminous pods or the crops or the pulse crops even in the field and uh, can attack onto the uh, seed pods in the field and from where this can be carried to the storage godowns also. The mung, gram, tur, lang, bean that is lentil and woodid are generally infested when the grain is whole. The larvae bore into the pulses and grains and feed and develop inside. As we have explained earlier, the, the grub larva on hatching penetrates inside the grains of these pulse uh, crops and uh, even the uh, grains or the pulses and penetrates inside and develops inside for about 2 to 3 weeks uh, period during which it undergoes 4 to 5 moltings and getting transformed into the mature larva. So, all these changes that is feeding and the development of the larva or the grub taking place inside the pulse grains or the pulse crops or the pulses and developing inside and after which it, it, it undergoes the pupation also inside the uh, food, uh, pulse grains or in the pulses or in the dust. The infestation in case of grains in early stages cannot be detected since hole through which the larva enters is very minute. 
so in the initial phase of storage we can't see or we cannot uh, get idea about the infestation of the food grain uh, pulse grains uh, or the pulses because of there is a presence of very small hole and uh, uh, that cannot be uh, uh, seen easily because it is very small circular uh, hole uh, through which the larva penetrates inside and feeding on to the internal uh, floor material or the protein material uh, that is food or the nutrients and, re and resulting into the complete hollowing of the uh, grains inside. The damaged grains are hollow inside and bearing very small hole and are unfit for human consumption. So, the larvae feeding uh, completely on the internal material and uh, thus resulting into hollowing of the uh, grains inside and uh, this becomes uh, unsuitable or completely spoiled and become unfit for human consumption. Then uh, regarding the control measures, as we have explained earlier in the control measures of the uh, rice weevil, the same cultural uh, control measures or the chemical control measures can be applied or employed for the control of this pest. So, cultural control can be achieved by growing susceptible crops at least a kilometer away from the storage grounds which are the main source of infestation. So, this pest can be carried uh, from the field to the storage grounds and hence uh, it, uh, the one of the control measure can be done that is uh, growing or uh, sowing the susceptible crops at least one kilometer away from the storage godowns and thus we can prevent uh, the entry of this pest into the storage godown because the main source of infestation is from the field also. The fumigation of methyl bromide in the stores is a very effective but proper precautions must be taken uh, because of high toxicity of this compound. So, methyl bromide uh, can be fumigated. So, fumigation of the methyl bromide uh, in the store godown or in the storages uh, is also the effective, but it is highly toxic and uh, thus uh, one has to take a proper care or the precautions while fumigation of the methyl bromide. Even we can uh, use the fumigants like ethylene dibromide, then carbon tetrachloride, ethylene dibromide or carbon tetrachloride uh, can also be used as a fumigants uh, in the storage godowns. Then remaining measures are same as that of rice weevil, Cytophilus or Ig, where we can also employ the sieving and cleaning or even after sieving and cleaning or proper sieving and cleaning of the infested uh, grains of the or the pulses, we can uh, uh, dry them or, or we can expose them in a direct heat of sunlight that is sunning or drying. Sun drying can also be employed uh, prior to the storage of the infested food grains after the treatments like uh, sieving, cleaning, uh, drying and then the fumigation in a uh, uh, closed situation. So, we can uh, follow the same treatment uh, to the infested uh, pulse grains of cereal grains or the pulse grains and the uh, even in the storage house uh, just like the treatments which are given to the uh, food grains are for the control of the rice weevil. So, whatever the measures, curative or preventive measures, whatever the preventive measures or the curative measures uh, used for the control of Cytophilus or Ig that is a rice weevil can be employed uh, for the control of the pulse beetles also. So, uh, this is about the 
life cycle then uh, nature of damage and the control measures of the pulse beetle so today we will uh, stop here next time we will explain the remaining uh, uh, type, uh, type of the paste that is a veterinary paste called as a tick so today we will stop here and next time we will continue with the life cycle of the tick uh, thank you